Hi guys, Slane here. So today is part two or day two of the resin fish painting. 24 hours should have elapsed from day one if you are following the tutorial step by step, day by day. So you need to wait 24 hours before you start this session as even if it appears like your resin is ready to go and you're ready to paint on it, it could still be slightly tacky, which will create an issue if you want to erase. Um, if you make a mistake during painting, you can erase using water and if it's slightly tacky, if you try to erase, you'll actually ruin the entire thing and you pretty much cannot save it at all. So again, make sure that you've watched part one and you wait 24 hours. If you are doing a um, UV light resin and you've already cured it, then of course, it, once it's all cured, you can go on to the next step. But for this one, we're using a 24 hour curing process. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so if you haven't noticed, I switched to an extremely close up um, lens so you can see what I'm painting. But I will warn you, this first layer is going to be very transparent. Um, if you look at fish's fins, which is what we're going to be focusing on today, fish fins tend to be quite transparent, especially at the tips of them. They're almost completely see through, which is what we like because it adds to the illusion when you're able to see a little bit of this brown background through the fish's fins. Now typically when I'm doing this, I use reference images that I've personally painted myself. Um, if you notice that one video I made with the chimes lamps, um, I actually sketched it out beforehand just to see what kind of fish I was going to be painting. But for this tutorial, I went ahead and I printed out a fish from the internet. You want it to be, of course, a top-down view because fish don't swim sideways. The fish is going to be in there like this, right? So I've got my fish right here as a reference. Only use internet images as a reference, please. A lot of times that these images are made, they're made by professional photographers that are selling the image to people that are gonna use them in magazines and whatnot. So we pretty much wanna just use these as a reference so we're not drawing off our minds. When we're drawing from our minds, typically we draw things out of proportion and we also draw them with very heavy outlines. If you're drawing a dog, you're gonna add like an outline of a dog, but dogs aren't actually running around with outlines around them. So I would grab an image from the internet, but just use it as reference, change the colors up, maybe change the position a little bit. But what we're gonna mostly be using this for is to reference where these points are, the fins are, the head is, the eyes are. That's what we're gonna be using this reference image for. We're also just gonna be using it for the anatomy of the scales, and we essentially are using it for the shape of it, but we're not gonna be using it for the color scheme or anything like that. I think I'm gonna add some white bits to my fish to make it a little bit more uh, like a cow um, when it comes to its coloring. And I'm also gonna add a, some small fish on this side that are just gonna be you know, small fish that are just swimming around. And I'm gonna show you how to make those as well. We don't need a reference image for those. We're just gonna do a couple different depths of fish swimming around, and then we've got our large fish on the side here. So for our large fish right here, we're gonna put the reference image down, and we're gonna go ahead and mark out where the fins are. For my paint, I've got quite a few different colors here. If you got a plastic cover, you can probably use this paint, this amount of paint for your entire painting. You don't need a lot of paint for these paintings, of course. I'm just mixing up a good background color for my fish's scales here, or not scales, fins here, because I'm gonna go ahead and mark out this portion, this portion, and the um, portion right here. Let me go ahead and place this where I want it to be. How about, how about right there? So I'm gonna go ahead and place this down and I'm gonna go ahead and mark out our V, our fin, our other fin, and this fin. Now, of course, fins aren't gonna have this outline. I'm gonna be quite quick because I wanna wipe off the edges here, make sure that they don't dry into a harsh edge. However, it's very easy to erase um, paintings on resin. It's essentially like painting on glass. 
And if you have ever put paint on a glass surface, you'll know that you can just wipe it off with water. That's another reason that you should be using a water soluble um, paint. That way it just comes off quite easily. Now I've got actually an outline of my fins, as you can see right there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and color these in because I do want them to have a slight background to them, but I am gonna try to make them transparent in just a second here, so I'm coloring them in. You'll see me do this on my resin painting that I did sped up, um, the 5000% one. I actually oftentimes do color in the background, and this helps me to paint on top. It's quite hard to paint on a resin surface. It's painting on glass. Um, because of that, it's very slippery. So if you're trying to blend, you're just wiping the paint away. If you put a background to it though, it's quite a bit easier. Now we really do not want these harsh lines. Do you see how soft the tips of this fish's fins are? They're very transparent, so we don't want those lines. I'm gonna wet my paintbrush a little bit, a little less than that. Remove the paint from it. So it's just a wet paintbrush and I'm just gonna stroke inwards and remove those harsh edges. Oh, I waited a little bit long on this. It's still got some harsh edges, but that just means grab a little bit more water, dry it off just a little bit and continue working. Do you see how that's softening that edge quite a bit? It's almost like feathering it out. That's exactly the look that we're going for. Continue doing this on all the edges that you want to go ahead and fan out. The quicker you do this, a little bit easier because uh, the paint won't have settled as much as mine just did. It settles quite quickly as you saw. It. I only had it on there for maybe 40 seconds before it started to settle. Ooh, that one looks very nice, very feathered. I might even want to bring a little bit more pigment out. Let me go ahead and do that, grab a little bit more paint. Again, you see how I'm accidentally wiping paint away when I'm doing this? It is very hard to paint on this kind of surface. You almost don't want to work on it too much, otherwise you're gonna start creating lines and crap. All right, so that's pretty blended. I'm not gonna touch that. You have to know when to stop. All right, I'm gonna wet my paintbrush again and I'm gonna go ahead and do, oof, got a hair in it. Do this edge as well. And bring that color right that way. Just like that. And now I wanna do the same thing to the fins here. It's got one body fin that's visible right now. I might add another body fin on the other side. We'll see. I might make a slight impression of it where it's barely, barely visible. You see how I'm, I don't know if you can see that. I made a slight mistake there. I'm just gonna wipe that away. Very easy to erase with resin fish uh, or with any sort of painting on resin because you just literally wipe it away. All right, I'm gonna continue adding water and we're gonna go ahead and really soften this. You don't want it to be too wet. You can go ahead and clean your brush off of liquid and then just use a dry brush to move the liquid that's already on the resin and soften it that way as well. That one is not very soft. Um, I don't know if you can see that from where you are, but it is not very soft. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint to it. And I'm gonna do it just a little bit on this side as well. A little bit here and just right there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and wait for this background to dry before we do any details on it, um, because if we start doing details on it now, it's just gonna move the paint out of the way, which is what we don't want. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of water outside this and blend this out a little bit more. As it dries, I can kind of see where the impression is. It's actually gonna look a little bit more transparent when we put the resin on but 
as it dries, we can actually see where paint is since it is so transparent. But we do want a slight impression of a fin. We want it to be transparent, but we, we still want it to be visible. We're not gonna do an invisible painting here. While that's drying, let's go ahead and start with drawing a couple baby fish in here, okay? So let me go ahead and turn this. I do want the fish to all be kind of going in the same direction. So how about we do a fish right here? I'm just gonna move this so we can get a good angle of this painting. How about right there? Um, it's a little bit off center, but I'm gonna try to put the fish right here. Now for this, I'm just gonna grab some orange not a lot of water and I'm going to go ahead and draw a head okay let me fill that in a body just like that and then we want a little impression of a fin which I'm just gonna do almost with a clear brush right here I'm using almost a clean brush to do the fin here. Want to be a bit transparent, not too transparent. Small fish tend to not have long, flowy, transparent tails, but we do want it to be a little bit more transparent than the body. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna wait for that guy to dry before we do any details on him, including the side fins, the eyes, and any sort of little details on him. But let's go ahead and add a couple more buddies so he's not so lonely, okay? So let's, and we can do them all a couple different sizes and maybe swimming in a couple different, um, a couple different turns. Like we can have a couple that are really turning. Like how about we do one towards the middle that's really turning around like this like that and then and there's a little bubble in him let me move that at least towards the head all right and then we're gonna do ones that are almost paint almost uh going straight let's draw one going almost straight there's one right there let me again we want to pull as much paint towards the head as possible Let's add, how about we add two little siblings that are right next to each other. Just like that. And let's add one more big one right over here. Just like that. All right, so that's one layer of baby fish, but as we lift up the layers, we're gonna draw more and more baby fish. Um, pretty much every layer is gonna have baby fish on it. It creates this beautiful effect where these fish are just swimming in a circle. And at some layers, we can even add some fish over here off to the side. This in this area right here, I might add one or two right there once I'm done with this fish right here. Um, once these ones dry, well, let's go ahead and add the fins to them again with an almost dry brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it, but no paint. Cool, just like that. Now we've got some baby fish. We're gonna wait for those to dry before we add any eyes or any extra details. As our fish are almost painted here as an or not painted dry um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add tiny little eyeballs to these guys right here and a little bit of fins to them so I'm gonna grab an ultra fine brush here that's gonna be extremely hard for me to paint with considering I've had so much caffeine today um, and we're gonna go ahead and draw little eyes on them um, usually you don't want to use black for eyeballs because it's such a harsh color. So I'm gonna uh, mix a little bit of black with a little bit of silver to create more of a gray color for these eyeballs. 
maybe like a dark smoky gray. That way they're not, you know, floating little black dots that are quite dark compared to the rest of this painting. Um, even eyes in person, they don't tend to look stark black. They tend to have a little bit of background colors to them. So we are gonna do more of like a gray color here. And I have mixed a little bit of a gray. It's got a little bit of shimmer to it. Got my paintbrush loaded up here and I'm just gonna dot as carefully as possible. Little eyeballs on these guys. Ooh, that might be a little harsh. Yeah, this color might be a little harsh. I don't want it to look cartoony, but it's already looking a little cartoony. It's okay though, as soon as these guys dry, I can go ahead and add a little bit of um, orange over this just to soften these dots. There we go, we've got little dots on there for eyes. And we're also gonna add tiny little fins. So I'm gonna use this same brush I'm gonna load it up with a little bit of orange, but we want it to be like 90% water, but we don't want it to be very dripping wet. So it's, now I've got a little bit of orange on here. It's mostly diluted with water, but I did wipe the brush off so it's not dripping wet. And we're gonna add tiny little fins to these guys. Oop, I need a little bit more paint. There we go. You can see it's so translucent, which is exactly what we want. We want it to be the softest of details. We don't want these guys to be the center of tension. We don't want these guys to have a lot of details. They are baby fish, and we're gonna keep them that way. We're gonna keep them baby fish, which are very detailless little blobs. Thankfully, there's gonna be so many of them that if you have an ugly one, you won't even notice it. If they're all ugly, I'm going to be very upset with myself though. All right, so once these gray dots dry, I am gonna do a little bit of a transparent orange layer on top of them, just to soften them up so they're not in your face, uh, little gray dots all over the painting, especially if we add that to all of them, that's gonna look wonky as hell. So I am grabbing a little bit of orange and I think this is dry. Since there's not a lot there, it's gonna dry very quickly. And I'm just going to, yep, do that to them. That's actually looking a lot better in my opinion. I'm liking this a lot more. This guy is almost dry. These guys have a little bit of softened their eyeballs, which I'm much happy with. And they've got pretty much fins on them. Everything's nice and soft. So since these guys are dry, this this isn't quite dry yet, but these guys are dry, we're gonna go ahead and start adding details and softening these guys up a little bit more. One thing I noticed is I've got a nice watermark line right here, which I want to go ahead and soften up. Again, the fish is pointing towards me right now, as in this, <laughs> this way. So I do want these edges to be extremely soft. As it dries, you'll see it actually looks a lot less transparent because the dry paint has this almost white coating to it. Once the resin goes on top, that will go clear, I promise you. So as you get these like white edges, don't even worry about it. It means there's a little bit of dried paint there, but it's gonna be so transparent once that liquid resin is over it. Um, so what we're gonna work on right now is softening up that edge a little bit. Cause I know that's gonna be a line in the future. So I just grabbed a little bit of water and I'm just softening that. I'm gonna wet almost the entire thing here, but really focus on smoothing out that line. It's really stubborn, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take up some paper towel. I'm gonna dip it a little bit in water, not too much, cause I don't want it everywhere. And I'm just gonna use my nail to scrape that paint up. And that is how you surefire erase um, a paint on resin. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite easy to erase these guys. So don't feel afraid to start your painting because it's so, so easy 
to fix a mistake that you've made. I just went ahead and added a little bit more pigment towards the inner corner. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of these pieces because I do want it to be a little bit more opaque coming towards the edge here. All right, now that I've done that, I'm gonna wait another minute for this to dry. That way I can go ahead and start adding details like um, veins and things like that. I did add a couple more baby fish because I got bored while waiting, but I will mention one thing. If you notice, actually, I think you can see one right there. Do you see how there's shadows casted by these fish? I got a lot of comments on my video asking how I painted shadows uh, or how I made the shadows. The paint creates a shadow. It's an actual paint uh, cast in clear. The paint is opaque, so it does create a shadow. Um, those are just made from your painting. Uh, there's no trick to the shadows. It's literally just the regular thing that happens when you create an image. Um, it typically casts a shadow once light cannot penetrate through it. Um, so that's how those are made. Um, that is something I wanted to point out because I got that question quite a bit and I didn't want to sound like I was being insulting by just saying it, it just shows up, but it really, it really does just show up. Um, I did get a little bit of paint outside where I wanted it to be. I just saw that, so I'm just going to wipe that off with a little bit of water, grab some paper towel and remove that right now. Ooh, that's really stuck on there. I'm gonna just use my nail here. Well, I don't think it's that bad, but this is one of those things where sometimes the paint will really stick. I don't want to scrape and scratch the resin surface here. Um, but I don't think that's gonna be really noticeable. It's a slight faint speck of color right there. I don't think you can even see that on camera. Um, so now that this is completely dry, let's go ahead and start adding um, some veins to it. So I'm going to put this reference image down. Put it right there. Don't want it to touch my wet baby fish. You see how there's veins on the tail of this fish through there? So we're just going to add some veins on ours. Um, we're going to use a fine brush. Uh, it is very, very hard for me to paint with a fine brush. Um, my hand does shake quite a bit, and I'm not the best artist anyway. But I'm going to do my absolute gosh darnest best right now to get a very good image of these veins. Again, we don't want anything to be too uh, opaque, but we do want it to be um visible so i've got my paintbrush loaded up with water and paint and i'm gonna go ahead and drag that across where i want one vein to be just like that looking at that right now i'm gonna go ahead and determine that i need a little bit more paint and i'm gonna go ahead and try to hit the same line again just like that just to reiterate that line do you see that line right there it is very faint but this is the kind of detail that's gonna add a little bit more realism to your painting and we're just gonna try to and then it just tends to come up but it's so faint that we're just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and remove a little bit of paint from my brush that way it's a little bit thinner I think that's gonna be good for that side. And we're just gonna continue across. Grab a little bit more paint. Seems to swipe across like this, so that's what we're gonna do. Just like that. Grab a little bit more paint. Do it on this side. I'm sorry you won't be able to see from this angle me doing this side. I'm 
just like that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do that on the little fins here. And they are quite faint, but we're just gonna go across like this. And on the other side, again, sorry that my hand covers certain angles. It's hard enough to be filming this painting inside a bowl to be able to get these angles here. You will not, you would get anxiety to see what I have set up to carry my um, DSLR camera right now so we can get these overhead shots. It's essentially hanging uh, by a thread here. Um, in fact, I'm probably gonna at some point be able to record a tragic event with my DSLR camera if I continue to mount it there. But it is what it is and it's the best what I've got right now. So I did make it quite fat at the base here, but as I'm looking at this image, it's not quite that fat, is it? This part right here. So I am gonna go ahead and try to remove that. I'm using again paper towel and water to erase. Now that I've gotten that erased, I'm gonna use a dry paper towel to grab the water. Dab that away. And then I am going to grab my paintbrush and I'm going to create a little bit of an outline so I know how thick this fish is gonna be so I can just visualize it a little bit better. So the tail comes in like this and then it comes out like this and goes like this. This layer is gonna be completely covered in the future by paint, so I'm not that stressed out about this part of the painting. It will be completely covered by later painting layers. So I am just creating that for a guideline for myself here. Just like that, and let's go ahead and create and then move this so I can just map out where the body is going to be. That's where the eyeball is going to be. That's where the eyeball is going to be. And then it's got a very round nose. So there's its round nose. So that was just me mapping out where the body is going to be. This is going to be completely invisible because I'm going to be painting on top of it as the layers grow up. But now I can kind of see where the fish is going to be in my mind and I'm like, yes. I do like that, so we are gonna continue and not make any changes to that body shape as of right now. And yeah, that looks good. These uh, fish that I added while I was bored are just about dry, so I'm gonna add their eyes. This time I'm gonna mix the gray and the orange together. Hopefully that negates the necessity of me having to put orange on top because that was a little bit anxiety inducing. I still have to put orange on top of that, but it's a little bit better. Definitely I'm enjoying the more grayish, grayish orange more than the other color. All right, so we're gonna wait for this to dry and then we're going to darken up the fins and really just get into more details. And this will probably be the last one before we do another layer of resin. All right guys, it's looking pretty dry, so we're just gonna add the last few layers and the last couple details to this fish before we start mixing a little bit more resin for her. So one thing I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit more ribboning to this guy. Do you see how it has ribbonings of orange and yellow in this? You might not be able to see from this very glared image, but it does have ribbons of yellow and orange. So I am gonna be adding some metallic gold and that's I'm doing that instead of straight yellow because I do want to make this sh uh, this fish a little bit more metallic so I am adding a little bit of a metallic color here and I'm mixing that pretty much I'm mixing gold and copper together right now and it's very glittery very metallic 
once I've got that on my paintbrush, I'm gonna go ahead and add some details. This is nice because it's not very realistic for fish to have gold and glitter, but I do absolutely love the effect personally. This is my little touch of this isn't realistic, but I absolutely love it. If you notice the fish that I painted that I enjoy, actually it's my very favorite fish that I painted. Um, it's the one that is like, it's a little bit more fancy looking. I did add a lot of glitter to that and I think it turned out gorgeous. That's like my favorite part about that fish is how glitterly, glittery it is. Um, so this is just something that I personally enjoy adding. Not very realistic, but I enjoy it. I'm going to add slight gold accents also to my baby fish. Not a lot, just a touch. Oh, I forgot to add tails onto and fins onto our new fish that I added. So I'm going to add that as well before we put the resin on. There we go. Now I've got a little bit of gold there. You can't see it, but it is going to be a little bit of an extra little touch to the finished product, um, which I'm excited about. All right, I'm going to add some light orange fins to uh, my fish here. Just like that. And I'm also gonna add orange on top of their eyeballs because I haven't done that on these fish yet. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I do wanna add just a little bit of a darker orange to these fins just right at the base <laughs> of these guys. So we're gonna wait a little bit for that to dry, actually. That is dry, so we're gonna add that right now. For this, I'm not gonna do the same orange that I've done for these guys. I'm gonna add a little bit of copper to this as well. So it looks a little bit more dark. And let me go ahead and add those in. That's looking okay. Now that's looking fine. Um, I am just going to go ahead and drag it out a little bit with a clean brush. This brush has no paint on it, it's just me dragging the paint that I already put down. You can see as we have more layers, it is so much easier to do uh, details because the paint is no longer being dragged around and then erased underneath it. And I'm just gonna add slightly dark brown just to the tip here. And drag that out. Oh, this is looking so much better. Again, patience is key. 
and you also need to know how to stop because not everything in the world is super textured and detailed. Uh, and I am right now not looking at the reference image, which sometimes if you don't look at any reference images for a while, um, you can have more than one reference image for one image, by the way. Um, but if it's been a while since you've looked at an image, you might start getting a little bit more and more cartoony. But I am absolutely loving the effect that I just created there. And I think it's time for us to go ahead and solidify this layer, which again was the fins and some baby fish. So I'm going to go ahead and mix some resin for you to see how that is done. We're gonna go ahead and mix one layer of resin. I think one cupful is gonna be more than enough. So one cupful for me is gonna be um, three caps resin and three caps hardener. Um, when I say caps, I measure my resin using the cap of the bottle. Um, I, you really, uh, I wouldn't 100% recommend this because it is kind of a messy process. Um, however, this is how I've always done it and this is, in my opinion, a little bit not too wasteful because you're not uh, disposing of a plastic cup and again, you should not be rinsing plastic cups that have been co consumed by resin at some point because it is very damaging to water systems. So as you can see, I just did one cap full of resin, which I'm going to go ahead and put in my bowl here. Also, resin is not very nice to hands, so make sure you don't get it on your hands. Um, I have, per I personally have a contact dermatitis for so many different um, chemicals that I would highly recommend that you use gloves when handling resin, and often you need some sort of open scenery, ventilation, and even a mask if necessary. That being said, um, please follow the instructions for your particular resin. Not all resin cures the same, um, and not all resin is going to take 24 hours. Some resin are cured using uh, UV light, and I also have uh, tried resin that you add drops to, like two or three drops of hardener to, and it heats it up, like it super heats it up, and that's how it cures. Um, I would not recommend that for resin fish building because it actually can crack your painting doing many layers of this really heat activated resin. It can crack previous resin layers because it's not meant to be um, multiple layers. It's meant to be like a single pour and then you're done. All right, so I've got my resin going here. I think that was three. I got so carried away talking that I kind of was not counting but that is that looks like three so now that I've got that going I'm gonna go ahead and cap this guy wipe it up with a paper towel make sure that there's no resin that's gonna drip out of the bottle all right, and then we're gonna add three of the hardener. The hardener is a lot easier to pour because it's so liquidous compared to the very thick consistency of the resin. And this is equal parts, so we're gonna do three capfuls of hardener. All right, now we've got our resin and our hardener in our little container here. And it looks clear, but as we start to mix, you're gonna see that it's gonna go very weird, not mixing together correctly. Again, this is how you tell when resin is gonna be completely mixed. You wanna mix until it goes clear again. So as you start mixing, it's gonna go foggy. This shouldn't be from bubbles. This should actually be from the mixture going foggy. Do you see how foggy that is now? So you actually want it to start to mix together. That's the fogginess that's created when the resin and the hardener is mixed together because they don't like to mix very easily together because they're two different consistencies. So it's gonna start to go foggy, but when it starts to go clear, that's when you know that it's perfectly mixed together and we're ready to pour it. So we're just gonna mix this.
Now that it's gone clear, we know that it's time to go ahead and pour it. And as I'm looking through, I'm not seeing any of the lines that show unmixed pieces because if you have unmixed pieces, it's not going to cure properly. And if it doesn't cure properly, um, that makes it pretty much a possible for ruining, a possibility for your painting being ruined. I'm going to go ahead and double check my painting, make sure there's nothing else I want to add to this particular layer. We don't want to make this extra high, we just want to pour until it's a few centimeters higher than the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe that off and go ahead and start pouring. And do you see how my fish just went extra transparent? And even the fin towards the tip has gone extra transparent. That's what I meant before when the paint dries. It starts to have this whitish look to it. But once you add the resin, it goes even more transparent. I'm loving the transparency that I have currently. And I just want to add enough to create one solid layer. That's essentially the entire. That was perfect. I think that was exactly how much I needed. Not any less, not any more. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this resin up. And again, don't put anything down sinks. We want everything to go in the trash can. All right, so now that that's there, we're not going to swirl it too much because we don't want to agitate the paint that's underneath it. We want that paint to just be where it is. If you see any swirlies of paint, that means you've poured and it wasn't dry yet. But thankfully, I'm not seeing any right now. As you can see, this fish has gone a lot more transparent. That's exactly what we want. And even the tips of the fins, you can't see them anymore because they're so gosh darn transparent. Let me see if I can show you guys. And you know what? It's having issues because I'm moving and that's creating a shadow and it's, you see how shadowy? You can actually see myself, hello. <laughs> but um, do you see how the tips of these fins are completely transparent? That is exactly what we want. Um, we have a slight show of where the body is gonna be. You don't need to put that on. Um, I put that on so I can see what I'm doing a little bit and where our next layer is gonna start. For our next layer, we're gonna do a little bit of the base of the tail, a little bit of the base of the fins and the body. Um, but we don't want to bring any paint outwards because this is the depth that we want it at. Um, we're going to check tomorrow to see if we want to do the tops of these babies as well as some new babies. Um, so they're all at different depths. But if we add the tops to these babies, it's going to add an extra 3D effect. And you can even see that I am starting to get shadows from the babies that are going to move as the bull moves. You see that? That's again adding to the illusion of them being 3D, which honestly paint is 3D. So it is going to have that effect just because that's exactly what it is. It's not it's not a lie or anything. It's actually a 3D image because paint is 3D. All right, you guys. So tomorrow we are going to go over the next step. Uh, when I say tomorrow, I mean, you can do all of these steps 24 hours apart. I usually wait two, sometimes three days in between days. So you guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll go ahead and see you for the next part. Bye bye.